morning and thank you for joining me for this morning prayer on Friday. Today the church remembers Julian of Norwich who is often quoted as having said all shall be well, all shall be well and all manner of things shall be well. Born in the 1300s, we don't know her real name, only that at some point in her life she was attached to the Church of St Julian in Norwich, and so it was by this name that she became known. When she was 30 and suffering from what was thought to be a terminal illness, she had a series of 16 visions. But in reading them we discover that it wasn't her who said the infamous quote, but God who said it to her. We also discover that she goes on to argue with him about how all things couldn't possibly turn out well as she presents to him the sufferings and pains and evil that she sees in the world. How, she asks God, could all things be well when we take into account all of the suffering and all of the pain? And I guess Julian wasn't the first to ask that question and she certainly won't be the last either. But in responding, God assures her that he will, in the mysterious action of his divine love, power and wisdom, make all things well, presenting her with examples of how good things have happened through suffering. And ultimately, God doesn't explain how, but invites Julian to trust him as he does us today. And I think that's as important now as it was 700 years ago. And I guess what the Lord said to Julian, he said to the Apostle Paul before her, albeit in a different way, that all things work together for the good of those who love him. But I can certainly identify with Julian at times when she wonders how, and I'm sure that you can too. We worship a God who says in the book of Isaiah, Come now, let us reason together, for though your sins are as scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. God knows those things that trouble us, and we can certainly talk to him about anything. Lots of us are of course anxious about the future. We are naturally wondering how life will be like in the next few months. Will a vaccine be found? How long until we can see our family and our friends? And what will happen if we don't find a vaccine and we are elderly or vulnerable. In those situations when we are anxious, fearful and uncertain, let us remind ourselves of those words that were spoken first to the Apostle Paul, that God does indeed work for the good of those who love him, and then later to Julian, when he said, all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. And so today's psalm is Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Praise the Lord with the lyre. Make melody to him with the harp of ten strings. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with a loud shout. For the Lord is upright, and all his work is done in faithfulness. He loves righteousness and justice, and the earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and all their hosts by the breath of his mouth. He gathered the waters of the sea as in a bottle, and he puts the deeps in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spoke and it came to be. 
he commanded and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the peoples. The counsel of the Lord stands forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. For the Lord looks down from heaven and he sees all of humankind. From where he sits enthroned he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory, and by its great might it cannot save. Truly the eye of the Lord is upon those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord, for he is our help and our shield. Our heart is glad in him because we trust in his holy name. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And so our first reading today is from the first book of Kings. Elijah came to a cave and spent the night there. Then the word of the Lord came to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He answered, I have been very zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the Israelites have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. I alone am left, and they are now seeking my life to take it away. But the Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain before me, for I am about to pass by. Now there was a great wind, so strong that it was splitting mountains and breaking rocks in pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a sound of sheer silence. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his mantle, he went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Today's canticle is called A Song of Julian of Norwich. God chose to be our mother in all things, and so made the foundation of his work most humble and most pure in the virgin's womb. God, the perfect wisdom of all, arrayed himself in this humble place, for Christ came in our poor flesh to share a mother's care. Our mothers bear us for pain and for death. Our true mother bears us for joy and endless life. Christ carried us within him in love and travail until the full time of his passion. And when all was completed, and when he had carried us for joy, still all this could not satisfy the power of his wonderful love. All that we owe is redeemed in truly loving God, for the love of Christ works in us. Christ is the one whom we love. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. 
For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. We say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. And to read to you from Jesus Calling. <clears throat> Meet me early in the morning splendour. I eagerly await you here in the stillness of this holy time with me. I renew your strength and saturate you with peace. While others turn over for extra sleep or anxiously tune into the latest news, you commune with the creator of the universe. I have awakened in your heart a strong desire to know me. This longing originated in me, though it now burns brightly in you. When you seek my face in response to my love call, both of us are blessed. This is a deep mystery, designed more for your enjoyment than for your understanding. I delight in your enjoyment of everything that is true, noble, right, pure, lovely and admirable. And so think on these things, and my light in you will shine brighter day by day. So let us pray. Father, there are times when we look at people's lives, and we find it hard to believe that things can ever change for the better. We see them racked by illness, weighed down by anxiety, tormented by depression, crippled by debt, and broken by addiction. We see lives scarred by bereavement, shattered through unemployment, and we wonder what their prospects really are, what hope we can realistically offer them, what help we can possibly give. We thank you, Lord, for the words of the Apostle Paul, that you truly do, Lord, work for the good of those who love you. And later on in the words of Saint Julian, that all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Father, we pray for people known to us now. We pray for our family, for our friends. We pray, Lord, for members of our church fellowships, our colleagues at work, our neighbours and our acquaintances, as well as the countless people unknown to us, each struggling under their own particular burdens. Lord, shine your light where there is darkness. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our world, for those many people who are suffering injustice and hardship. We ask, Lord, that you would reach out to those who are in despair. And we pray for all who long for change, but see only hopelessness stretching before them. Please touch their lives and bring help, hope, healing and wholeness. Lord, may your light shine where there is darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, it is hard sometimes to believe those around us, still less the world around can ever change for the better. We see countries that are broken by war, people consumed by hatred, thousands living in fear, nation turned against nation, and multitudes made homeless by disasters. Again, Lord, we wonder what prospects really are, what hope anyone can offer, what help can possibly be given. But you are a transforming God, and so, Lord, may your light shine where there is darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help us to see beneath the surface, recognising that you are at work and that things can indeed change. Help us to see beyond appearances, recognising that you are a God able to transform even the most hopeless of situations. Give to us and all people the assurance that there is no one and no situation unable to be transformed by your power. Lord, may your light shine where there is darkness. We pray, Father, today for your people here in Sanderstead, for Carol Lacey, for Bill Jackson, for John Kempsell, Muriel Stocker, for Mo and Rob, Nancy and Sean, for Margaret Brooker, for Isaac and Zara Brown. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. And so the collect today for Julian of Norwich. Most holy God, the ground of our beseeching, who through your servant Julian revealed the wonders of your love, grant that as we are created in your nature and restored by your grace, our wills may be made one with yours, that we may come to see you face to face and gaze on you forever. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And so as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm rather hoping that you haven't heard Lola snore throughout that whole service as I have. But God bless her, she is here. <laughs> and may God also bless you this day in whatever you are doing. So we say together the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and evermore. Amen. Friends, all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. God bless you.